Hey, real quick before we dive into the Hardcore Closer podcast, if you haven't already, jump over to hardcorecloser.com, sign up and join over 20,000 sales professionals from around the world and receive free hardcore sales training every week after week that will help you step your game up. Now buckle up closers, here's Ryan, let's do it. Welcome to the Hardcore Closer Podcast. I am Ryan Stuman, the founder of HardcoreCloser.com. And this podcast is all about helping you close more deals. And, and look, if you're selling cars, homes, financial services, consulting, whatever it is that you're selling, coaching, right? This podcast is dedicated to helping you generate higher quality leads, increase your closing ratios, and show you how to charge premium fees for the items you sell so you can get paid what you are worth. What's up, everybody? I got a little bit of extra energy going on today. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling pretty damn good over here. Feeling fantabulous, folks. And uh, it's one of those days where, like, the the words are going to flow out, right? This could be a fast episode. could be a long one. We don't know. We're going to see where it goes through this. But it's going to be a good one regardless, which brings me to the fact that we're here at episode 25, right? Like, so we've done, like, uh, 25 of these things, right? Well, I mean, I guess we haven't officially done 25 at the point that I'm saying this, but we will by the time you're listening to this have – 25 podcasts out there, right? And look, if you're a first timer, you're probably wondering what's up with me, man. I'm super weird. It's okay, man. Like you just have to kind of get, you have to look past the weird to search for the brilliance. That's all it's about, right? But if you're first time here, I'm super happy that you're here. You need to thank whoever it is that invited you here. Like give them a high five. Be like, yeah, dude, that's what's up. Thanks for turning me on to the THC podcast. It's totally awesome. That guy is full of energy. It's funny. It's hilarious. And Look, here's the other thing, right? I need you to do me a favor. At the end of the show today, after you've listened to all this, or hell, if you're listening to it on your phone right now, just do it at the same time you're listening to the show. It's playing in the background. It's no big deal. But go ahead and give me a five-star review on iTunes. No, I didn't say one star. I didn't say two star. I'm setting expectations here, folks. I need five-star reviews because here's why. And it's not out of some like self-serving, greedy, egotistical thing, right? I believe that these shows are worth a lot of a lot of value to the sales community, and the reason why I do these free shows is to try and help people that can't afford to buy trainings or fly to seminars or any of that stuff to help you folks out, right? And that's not doesn't count all of you, but to help those folks out that can't afford it, right? It's where they can make more sales, where they can afford to invest themselves and get better at sales, where they can help more people, right? That's what it's all about. And the only way that I can do that is if iTunes shows my podcast to more and more people. Sure, we can market it on the back end like we're doing already. But iTunes is the source for podcasts. So you going in and leaving a five-star review, but it's like SEO for Google, right? It just bumps me a little bit further up and through the uh, the ranks there of the podcast little SEO page there on iTunes. And then boom, before you know it, trying to help 350 million salespeople over here. This is not some kind of like small goal. 350 million of anything is a lofty ass goal. And that's what I'm trying to do over here, right? And the only way that it, I can get you to help me out with that. Well, there's a couple ways I get you to help me out with that. But the only thing that we can do as far as iTunes goes where you listen to this is put a five-star review on there so that we get more and more reviews so that iTunes shows this to more and more people. Like like my, my uh, well, I shouldn't assume that it's a man, right? But it says, uh, well worth your time. Five stars here by B. Ballman Forever 14. Listen, Robert, I told you with these damn, these names, man, how are you going to confuse me in the middle of my own show with these these bullshit names every week, right? Does anybody ever give a review on iTunes with a normal fucking email address? What is wrong with everybody, man? Like, y'all are incognito giving reviews out there, and it's some bullshit, folks. What, what's going on? Or are you just picking the fucked up ones, right? Did we well, have Mega Man 420 or Hooker or fucking 970? Yeah. What's the fuck going on over here, man? It's a combination of both, no doubt. Sometimes the name gets me a little bit, makes me laugh, and sometimes it's the, it's the, uh, the review. This guy left a great review, or gal left a great review yeah see we don't even know what the hell right but hey b b allman or b ballman or b whatever the fuck forever 14 it wrote right here ryan stum is the man listening to his podcast and learning things from his facebook which group is a great time investment he's talking about the sales talk with sales pro group on facebook he has tons of free nuggets on his podcast and will give you an insight on how good his paid products are and uh, that would give you an, in, an insight on how good his paid products are. So I see why you picked that one, man. But damn it, these names are killing me. They're killing me. Because it's it's not that I can't like read. It's not that I can't talk. Obviously, I can do both. I'm putting this show together. But like I said, I don't know if that's B.B. Allman or B. Ballman 
or or maybe it's basketball man forever 14 like we, we don't know right we don't know so anyway we just i'm just looking for one that's like john smith 1429 like hey we know that person hey thanks a lot john smith right we robert is not allowing that to happen all right man i got a little sidetracked with the add thanks to the fucking weird names that uh my producer over here is picking for us but let's get into the content right because uh in this episode i'm gonna talk about getting past the gatekeeper and uh you know, in sales, that's one of the things, especially those of you in B2B sales. And matter of fact, uh, as we're recording this, about 30 minutes ago, I recorded a live video for the Sales Talk with Sales Pros group on uh, Facebook. And one of the guys was re streaming his live calls back there uh, for selling promotional products B2B, right? And so, you know, I, everybody's making fun of the guy. So I, I, by nature, me being the, uh, the hero here, right, I want to come in and and rescue somebody, right? And so I go in, I critique some of his stuff, give him some help and show him some ways that he can improve. And the the thing is, we were just talking about how so many B2B people uh, do things the, the wrong way, right? People always say, oh, it's different in B2B. Oh, you can't do that in my business in B2B. And there's no really gatekeepers in B2C. I mean, I, I guess they're maybe an assistant or something, but let's just, let's, when we're talking gatekeepers, we're talking B2B referral partners, things like that, right? Uh, because like the end customer doesn't have a gatekeeper, right? Like only business people have gatekeepers. So we're going to talk B2B today. And I'm going to talk about specifically how to use technology to get past the gatekeeper. Because listen, the day of walking through the front door, and I know there's some of you out there going to shoot me down for this. And it's okay. I got a parachute. Uh, but the days of just walking into somewhere and getting business, man, and that's kind of, I mean, that's like beyond old school. That's like saying you still got an eight track player in your car, right? Like at this point, like at this point, it might just be nostalgic, right? If someone like knocked on my door to sell some shit, I'd be like, wow, this is nostalgic as fuck, right? Like this person still, well, we got all this technology to make their life easy and they've chose to walk over here, right? They chose to come to this business unannounced without being invited, assuming that we ain't got shit to do around here. This motherfucker's a dinosaur. Right now, I know there's some of you out there and you're like, bro, Stuman, I roll through, no appointment needed, interrupt motherfuckers and close them, yo. I see that. I'm sure it, it happens, man. And I'm not saying I couldn't do it, but I'm saying that as a person uh, who enjoys to uh, partake in some of the finer parts of uh, some of the finest produce in Colorado, right? I, I don't want to walk everywhere that I don't have to. I don't want to talk to people that don't want to talk to me. That's how you get paranoid and shit like that, right? I don't want to waste my time or anybody else's time because I value time. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to teach you how to get around this gatekeeper because – but here's the thing. Like I can't put you – I don't endorse door to door. I don't endorse like going in, in cold meetups and all that. I just, man, it's not my thing. So I can't help you for those of you that are still going out there and meeting the gatekeeper face to face. Like I can't help you run that play, right? Cause it's just, it's just weird at these, at this day and age to even, to even do that. Right. I mean, set an appointment and what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you today. I'm going to give you three ways uh, that you can use technology to get past the gatekeeper, which essentially means the gatekeeper won't even exist in your world at all because you just go like right around them like you second the quarterback, right? Like you just completely miss the center. It's almost football season. It is football season. It's preseason, right? It's just like go right around the center and suck that motherfucker. Like hit him. All right. So first thing is social media, right? Like big, big obvious like, you know. The, the obvious go-to place to be able to pass the gatekeeper because here's the thing. The gatekeeper is on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and YouTube and all this stuff, but you're not dealing with them, right? You're going right around them and you're going direct to the source. So here's what I would suggest for those of you in B2B. Here's how it works. First of all, figure out who the fuck it is that you want to talk to, right? Like oftentimes people say, you know, I just I, I need to talk to whoever's in charge of buying shit. Well, what the fuck does that mean? Anybody's in charge of buying shit. What kind of shit are you selling? What you know, like people are so unspecific. And it's funny, like we're trained because of schooling and everything else to use this like vague ass language. Uh, that way, you know, that way we're never in the position to accept responsibility, right? And then guys like me that use very direct language, I get hated on pretty rough, right? But at the same time, I'm very clear on what it is that I'm saying. And I say it intentionally, right? Which is the way most people don't do life. And so the reason why I'm telling you this is because if you're going to go straight to the decision maker, you have to know who the damn decision maker is. 
right? I'm talking about their name, their title, like first and last name, their title. You have to do a little bit of research. You know, it's, it's one thing to, to just call somebody and strike up a conversation or, or message somebody and strike up a conversation. It's another to, you know, show up and show interest in somebody. Because listen, just like Dale Carnegie said, if, if you want people to be interested in you, you have to be interested in them. And so the best way is to figure out, first of all, let's take a couple steps back, who it is that you're going after. When I'm talking about their name, where they live, like you, their, their position, CEO, CFO, like you need to know that exact. You need to know it all. Then what happens from there is once you have an idea who you're looking for, put their name into Facebook, put their name into the search bar in LinkedIn and pull it up. Here's the thing. Not, I mean, LinkedIn, everybody likes to pretend it's a great site for doing business, but people log in on average once a week. Some people, uh, way less, very few people more, right? Like people just LinkedIn's not a busy engaging site. It's mainly businessy, right? Uh, people log in on Facebook on average four hours a day. So just to give you an idea, so there's most likely going to be able to find this person on LinkedIn or Facebook, but if you find them on LinkedIn, it might take a few extra days before they respond to you, if they respond to you. But if you find them on Facebook, there's a good chance that they'll see whatever it is that you sent them that day, especially uh, even if you're not friends, you don't have to send them a friend request or a connection request. You can uh, buy email on LinkedIn, or if you send somebody a message on Facebook, uh, it goes to their other folder, but they still get notifications, right? We still get notifications that there's messages in our other folder. So uh, between those two sites, you can pretty much find anybody. So you can add Twitter in the mix there as well. But simply type in the decision maker's name into the search bar, bring up their profile, right? It gives you a chance to look at their profile and get to know them, right? This is the part where you're showing interest in them, right? This isn't about you or your product or your bullshit sales pitch, right? This is where you're actually researching to see who the fuck it is that you're selling to. You have a name and where they're from and their, their title, like their business title, CEO, CFO, general manager, whatever it is. But you don't have like that personality. So how can you even know how to talk to them? And all these resources are available to you for free. But how can you even know what language to use? Do you cuss? Do you not cuss? Right? Do you tell jokes? Do you not tell jokes? You ask about kids, you not ask about kids. No, you go and you look on their profile, and most people are going to leave a, a good, healthy amount of information public on their profile. Pictures of their kids, pictures of their family, where they live, when they were born, the, maybe the last place they ate dinner. Some, fr some friends are probably going to tag them and some stuff on there. It's pretty damn easy to do some research on somebody when it comes to Facebook. Same with LinkedIn. And, you know, Facebook sometimes even charges a couple bucks to uh, to send messages direct. They haven't done that to me in a while, but I have a pretty big following. But I know that you can pay like a dollar in the past and Facebook would send. And I know LinkedIn does it as well. So here's the thing. It, it's been my experience that when you go and you do what I call social reconnaissance, right? Like you look up the things that the person did and you send them a message like this. Instead of going, hey, man, I got some B2B shit you can buy, yo. You want some, right? No. Instead, what you do is you say, hey, you know, I'm, I sent you a firm request or, hey, I wanted to message you here. Or I never say that. I'm sorry. Hey, I sent you. You can, If you sent them a firm request, you can explain that you sent them a firm request. We're both in a similar business and it looks like you're highly successful and I'd like to connect with you on here as well. Also, I just happened to look at your page. Looks like you were at the zoo last weekend. Is that a fun place to hang out? Did your kids enjoy it? Right. Start that conversation. It's like, hey, I looked you up. I see who you are on here. Facebook suggested that we be friends. Right. Because I mean, kind of <laughs> you were on Facebook and they were there and you're like, hey, I suggest we be friends. Right. But like, hey, Facebook suggested that we be friends. I see that you're successful both in a similar field. So I, I thought I'd send you a request. Meanwhile, I just happened to look at your page and see that you were at the XYZ place, the, the last place they checked into. I've been thinking about going there. Is that a fun place to hang out? Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? Like some kind of question like that, but end on a question. Because here's the thing. If you end with a question, then they've got to respond to you when they see it, right? Or, or just ignore you if they just don't give a shit about you. But there's a higher chance of them responding if you – in with the question, right? Because there's something there that says, hey, please reply to this. Let me know. I'm asking you something. Give me an answer. So look, here's the thing. You know, you keep showing up fighting the gatekeeper like, what, what was his name? Uh, uh, Bud Fox, right? On uh, Wall Street. 
and you think, well, eventually I'm going to catch Gordon Gecko on an off day when he's willing to talk to me. Well, instead, why don't you just find out what Gordon Gecko's into, shoot him a message on Facebook, and y'all just have like conversation from there. You ask them about the zoo, they get to talking to you, blah, blah, blah. By the way, it looks like you're in this kind of business. Yes, we are. You're doing really good. Awesome. Say, man, well, here's what I do. Oh, that's cool. You start trading business conversation back and forth with them. That's how you start gaining that influence from a B2B world, right? That's how you get past the gatekeeper. Guess who wasn't involved in your conversation? Guess who didn't keep you from talking to them? That's right, the gatekeeper, because that bitch wasn't there to block you, cock blockers. All right, another tool that I use, and, and I love this. I shouldn't even be sharing this shit with you guys, but I promised the folks at Kickfire that I would. Uh, I, I, I love this tool, man. and It's like one of those things where it's like I, I want to talk about it, but at the same time, I don't want to talk about it because it's really my secret weapon. And I know there's a lot of people out there that, that uh, don't really like me but like listening to my shit, haters. And uh, this is like a secret weapon I'd hate to share with those folks. But you know what? I'm willing to look past that on this one because, A, Robert wrote it even though I, I think I told him not to. He wrote it into the uh, uh, thing here. But it's that, pow- that, that big of a tool. It's like this powerful, right? So uh, it's called Kick Fire, K-I-C-K-F-I-R-E. And, dude, this thing is caller ID for your website. So if you have a website or a blog or a squeeze page that's getting a lot of traffic, this thing is like seriously caller ID. And, like, when I say caller ID, like, when someone just, like, when a click goes to your website, it registers where that click came from, the business address it's registered to, the phone numbers that come up against that. It runs a Lexus, Nexus background checks. And, and cross-reference it with the Dun and Bradstreet index and let you know who's in every position and what their phone number and direct email is. Dude, it is sick. Now, it's not cheap. It's uh, it's like a 1000 bucks a month. Uh, for me, I get about uh, 400,000 uh, hits on my website a month. And, and you know, I, I'll tell you this. I'll just be real with you guys. This thing registers everything. I mean, it's unreal. And I really – we have so many inbound leads coming in that, you know, it's not uh, – I don't get to use Kickfire as much as I want. Just because we generate so many email opt-in leads, it's almost impossible for us to keep up. And I feel bad talking about it now because it's a tool that I love so much But I, because it, it takes the cold out of cold calling. And I'll explain that here in a minute. Uh, but it's something that, you know, we definitely uh, don't don't focus enough on. So, hey, you know, if you're listening to this – and you want to make a, uh, a bunch of calls for us over here and you want to go through some of our training and make some calls for us, maybe we'll, uh, we'll have a conversation and we'll put you in front of the, uh, the kick fire leads that we get because we're getting about 10,000 a day. Uh, so there's plenty of people for you to call. Uh, so if you're interested in that, shoot an email to Ryan at hardcorecloser.com. We're going to look for somebody who can turn these warm calls into hot leads, right? All right. So here's the thing. Here's how Kickfire works. When someone shows up, it registers their IP, it pulls their email address, their phone number, where they work, all that cool stuff, because all that stuff's registered somewhere. And so Kickfire, like it, it lets you, it gives you all that information up front. Well, here's what I do. If I go on the website, on Kickfire's website, I log in and I see that, you know, State Farm has uh, logged into my website or has uh, clicked onto my website. Someone at State Farm, doesn't matter where. But let's say that I see some big corporation. Well, I pull up that. I look for the broker of record right there inside of Kickfire. It gives me all their information. And I shoot them an email with a screenshot of their people on my website. And I say, hey, you know, I, uh, apparently you guys have salespeople over there. Awesome. Looks like they're hopping on our website, wanting to know a little bit of information about what we've got going on over here. I'd be more than happy to do a 30-minute uh, free sales training webinar with you guys uh, in the future if you would uh, if you're interested please reply to this email and we'll set up a time and a date just real simple it's like hey here's a screenshot your people are looking for uh, sales training I've got it let's do a webinar for free 30 minutes no big deal we'll set up a time here's the way to set it up and what that does with me is that allows me to get on a webinar and pitch their sales people right if I can get 20 or 30 people on that webinar from that company, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a sale to two to 10 of them, depending on how good my offer is and how, how, like how my game is that day. I might sell all 20 of them, but, and then guess what happens, right? Or I might close the boss on, cause if I talk to four or five of them and they're short on money, I might close them in to go getting their boss to pay for their shit for me. I'm going to make my money in that 30 minutes. 
And so here's the thing. It allows me to reach out. Now you say, well, I don't do webinars, Ryan, and I'm not a famous sales trainer. And, and so like I've got excuse after excuse after excuse. And here they are in my hands, right? And like uh, they're just like nice and golden to me, but they look like shit to you. But here's my excuses, right? So whatever those excuses are, here's the thing. You, sh- you, sh- you know that you're driving traffic to your website. And you're able to see that you're, the people that could – your pr- potential prospects are right there. Then it turns it into a warm call because someone in that company is at your website. And so when you call the front desk and the gatekeeper answers the phone, right, you can send them a direct message uh, right there on LinkedIn because Kickfire does do LinkedIn messages. Uh, and you can get their email address. It's real simple. you got to pay per lead. But, I mean, again, it's not a cheap platform, but it's very smart platform. And the, uh, the thing is with the emails, right? You like get to reach out to them and you get to say, Hey, I realize there's people from your corporation checking out our site right now. I want to make myself available to you and I want to answer and help you in any way that I can so we can earn your business, right? Just be straight up with them. Hey, there's people already checking this out. So we know that I know that you know that I know that you know that I exist. And all I'm saying is let's just talk some business. Y'all are looking into it. I got it. Y'all are fiending. I got the cure. Right. Let's just talk about it. So it's really easy on in the B2B level. If you if you if your company's got the budget, if uh, then kick fire is definitely the way to go. Like I said, it's not an inexpensive piece of technology, all things relative. Uh, it's not inexpensive, but it is awesome. And if you do something like I do, kick fires like our little secret weapon. Uh, when I need to give somebody uh, stats, I just hop on kick fire real quick and pull stuff up. Matter of fact, let's just be super uh, off the cuff here. And I'll pull up that they changed it to kick fire. It was uh, visit stats. They changed it to kick fire. That's right. Hold on. I'm all looking for the stuff up here on my. Wait for it. All right. So I'm pulling this up on my, my uh, computer right now so that I can show you guys. So yesterday, there was uh, 4,172 unique clicks to my website, right? So once I'm on Kickfire, and I'll just give you an idea right now, I can see that there's people from Johannesburg, South Africa. There's people from St. Paul, Minnesota. They're looking at the website. They can, it gives me their IP address. It tells me where they came from. This one says it came from Facebook. Another one says earn FU money sales from Columbia, Tennessee. And as I click on each of these, uh, inform- each of these people's information, uh, it tells me like this is the Daisy Group PLC. This is Morgan Huckabee Auto Group. This is Right Care Solutions Top Spot Next Level Renewables HDR Incorporated EBL Global Networks. Like I see you guys on here, State of Minnesota, right? So that's kind of cool. Parks Motor Sales Incorporated. So I, I know that there. If I call Parks Motor Sales right now, and I'm like, hey, you have salespeople, and I can actually even click on Parks Motor Sales. And, uh, and see what all they've got here, how many times they've clicked on my website. It looks like there's been uh, 250 clicks from them to my website. I can see uh, that Wayne Webster, Jim Gray, Monica Leitner is the finance manager, Danny Mashini, automotive painter. For, like, I can see all their stuff and get their phone numbers here. Dude, it is a slick, slick operation. And it allows me to reach out and say, hey, listen, I know that 250 250- times somebody in your sales organization or multiple people in your sales organization have taken a look at my website. I want to help you out with that. Let me give you some free sales training, right? And then I work my magic on them. That's how you get past a gatekeeper like a pro. All right, last but not least, you got to tighten up your text messaging game. And really, it's not just text messages. I mean, emails fall into this category as well. Oftentimes, my sales team, they'll say, well, I'm sending emails out. Man, I'm not getting a response. Well, don't send that one out anymore. Say something different. Shit. If it ain't working, it ain't working. So you've got to get good at getting, first of all, the first sale that you make through email or text message is getting somebody to open it. Uh, In a text message, usually it shows like the first two lines in the preview screen. You've got to make them want to open it from there. Uh, Same as the subject line in an email. The first sale is getting somebody to read that subject line and open the email so they can read what you've really got to tell them. The second sale is to keep them engaged, right? So now they've opened it. Are you going to make sure that they finish it? The third thing is to get them to do whatever it is that you wanted them to do when they finish reading it. So you're making a few sales, smaller sales, not closes, but smaller sales along the way that are ultimately adding up to the close. And listen, 
If you send emails that suck, they won't get open or read. If you send emails that sound like every other professional asshole out there, they won't get emailed or they won't get replied to or read, right? If you're sending – like Lindsay is my gatekeeper. My emails go directly to Lindsay. If you mail Ryan at HardcoreCloser.com, it goes to Lindsay and she sorts out what she thinks that I should read. And so the thing is like even and, – and she sends me quite a few things direct. And the cool thing about that is if somebody's written something well, if something's caught her attention, she'll forward it to me. And so even if the gatekeeper is reading this person's emails for them, just remember you got to write a good one so that the gatekeeper even feels like passing it on. It's 2016, folks. Well, it may be later. It depends on when the fuck you're listening to this. But it's 2016 when I'm saying this, folks, and I've been saying this shit since 2009. People are talking less and typing more. And there is a reason for that uh, that I don't want to go into all conspiracy theory shit, but there's a reason. And so the, w whether the reason – whatever the reason is, you just have to know that it's happening and you have to embrace it. And you know, we – the generations that are coming up below me, I'm 36. The generations that are coming up younger than me, the people that uh, are the next up-and-comers in the world, they've been born and raised – like my sons are born and raised with iPads. Like they didn't have that when I was growing up there. I had a black and white TV. I shit you not. Well, I was I, I remember when the first VCR came out. And uh, or at least in my town, right? And so the reason why I say that is they're growing up online. They're learning to type faster than they talk. And you have to understand that if you're gonna be around in the future, uh, if you're gonna communicate with people, the way that things are transcending is people are talking less and typing more. It's the end of the story. You can hide behind the Iron Curtain. Hell, I'm the same way. I like to text and email and all that shit more than I like to talk. And I really like to talk. But you know what? Text saves me a lot of time. It weeds out a lot of the bullshit. But I'm good enough at text where I can get people to read my stuff, whether it be through email or text, which makes all the difference because why write it if no one's going to read it? So tighten up your text game. Tighten up your email game. Get better at writing. Hey, buy something from John Carlton or Ben Settle or somebody like that that teaches you how to be a better writer and then do that shit. All right? John Carlton or Ben Settle, both of them are uh, really good copywriters that can teach you not how to write like, oh, I saw author dub these Shakespeare bullshit. I'm talking about like how to write like you talk, right? So like how you can make sales. The reason why I'm so good at blogging, pat myself on the back over here, is because John Carlton's book, Kick-Ass – Copyright Secrets of a Marketing Rebel. Shit changed my life. I write better today because of that. Uh, I'm still a member of Ben Settle's email players because that fucker can write. And I like reading his shit. And, and there's plenty of books that he sold me from Scott Haynes and stuff like that that have helped me as well because I see where this trend's going. So step one, you want to get around the gatekeeper. Social media should be your go-to spot. Put their name in the search bar. Figure out if it's them. And remember, first step was know who you're going to sell to, right? Like what's their title? who this person is, why they can buy your shit, why they would need to like identify that. Then go to social media, find them on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, one of those sites. Number two, my favorite kick fire. Damn, that's a man. I hate giving you guys that too. I love you guys, right? Like I'm torn like a better girlfriend, man. Like I love you guys and, and I love the sales community, but damn, this has been my secret for years, man. I've been using this for like two years. I've been keeping it a secret kick fire. They, now y'all can't be mad at me no more because I finally mentioned you on the air. I told you I was keeping you as a secret weapon, but I feel confident enough at this point where I can unleash the weapon out there. Third thing is you need to tighten up your message game. Get better at words, son. Words with fingers and shit, yo. Right? So uh, that being said, let me uh, let me give you like the quick outro real quick. If you haven't joined the 10-Day Hustle like what in the hell are you waiting for? People are making money from this, and it's free. There's like no gimmicks, no bullshit, just 10 days of hustling. It's real simple. It's like you know the, the 22 push-ups raising awareness for, for vets. Hey, man, we're doing a 10-day hustle to raise awareness of our bank accounts so that we can go out and invest in, in, and donate to whatever the hell you want, right? The best way to join the 10-day hustle is text the word hustle to 44222. Text the word hustle to 44222. And uh, – the other thing is uh, if you want to get all the show notes and everything, just go over to hardcorecloser.com and this will have everything on there. Lastly, if you want to follow me on social media, which would be really fucking cool at this point, you can go to clicksocom forward slash closer. That's C-L-Y-X-O.com forward slash closer. 
And while you're there, you might as well sign up for a free account. I happen to own that shit too. It's awesome. You'll absolutely love it. Uh, but this marks a uh, number 25 in the books, baby. That's it, man. Three ways to use the technology to get past the geek cable. Kiss my ass, gatekeeper. I'm going around you. And so, hey, here's the thing, though. Like, lots of good stuff been said on here, lots of ideas. None of it makes a shit if you don't do what we tell you. So make sure you get out there, do the 10-day hustle, and use this stuff to get past the gatekeeper. Later, folks. <laughs>